Greetings friends! Have you ever got involved in a project or some kind of undertaking that once you got involved with it you kept having problem after problem after problem and you wanted to quit but you said you know what I'm not going to quit I'm going to figure this out and make it happen and have some success with it. Alright, so I have no idea how this is going to go, but we're going to go ahead and give it a shot. I've been wanting to do this idea, I've had it in mind for some time now, but uh, how's to see if we can actually make it work? So we set up our invisible fencing with Libby as well as Hazel, our other goat, because one of the problems that we were having with Libby, it wasn't just Libby. Now that she was on the farm and she was getting out, she started encouraging our other goats to get out as well. And they started getting out. And it was like we're just having goats getting out all over the place and just kind of doing what they want to do. So set up the invisible fencing and had the shock collar with the trainer invisible fencing to go with the remote so i was like let's see what we can do if we can train them to stay inside the invisible fence so right now i'm just trying to give her an idea with the trainer collar here that what happens when she gets close to the the wire there Alright, so that one didn't go well. So attempt after attempt did not go well, and then one of them we just went bad majorly. I didn't get it on camera, which I wish we really would have gotten this on camera. But uh, at the time it wasn't fun, but it would be neat to look back on it. But we were trying to, and to use the invisible fence, got to the point where I was able to move out with the remote, and then the goat came to the point of the invisible fence line where it was getting shocked, and Hazel, the bigger goat, just she just went crazy. She just kept running into the woods, and she was all over the place, and then we were having to go get her, and I was like, this is not working. I was like, man, I really thought that this might be a really neat revolutionary idea with using an invisible fence with goats, since it works with dogs and even cats, but it is not working with our goats. So it's like, oh, we got to go back and find plan C, D, E, or F, or whatever. So that didn't work with invisible fence. So I was like, you know what? We're going to try to do a different setup. Ah, right, whew. So. That first trial didn't work out. <laughs> the goats went crazy when they got shocked and they just ran and one of them went in the woods way over there and it's like, ah. So, decided to work on one goat at a time and decided to put up this electrified netting here. Just kind of work with them as we're trying to train them to stay here in this area. So, we're still gonna use the invisible fence in conjunction with this just because she's just been so stubborn and keeps getting out and jumping over fences. So maybe the two fences combined will help keep this goat in there. And then as we stay in there using the, the trainer collar and with the trainer remote to shock her and uh, use a beep as she's getting close to the edge. Hopefully we can start training her to actually stay in here. So here we go. Alright, so since all of our other experiments have failed with the goats and containing them for right now, we're going to try something else. So Salem, if you're ready for our next experiment, I think we can try to do this. 
and hopefully this time it will be successful. What do you think? Okay. <laughs> All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, this time I wanna try like a double fence system. So we're gonna run the wire fence on the inner part and then put the netting on the outside part. So, cause one of the things that they've been doing is they've been going through the wire and just avoiding the shock somehow or just dealing with it and tolerating it. So if I have the netting behind the wire, so they'll bump into, <laughs> if they go through the wire, they'll bump into the electrified netting, get shocked by that and electrify the wire so they'll get like a double shock. So hopefully they won't do that. And I'm also thinking of raising the wire a little bit higher so they don't think of jumping over. Cause one of the things that they were doing with the netting is they were just jumping right over. So if I have the wire a little higher so that they, they're like, eh, don't think I'm gonna jump. And then we'll just try to go through like we have been. We'll run right into the netting. So, uh, woo, lost my hat. Woo. Actually, Libby was the one going through. The other ones would just jump over. Well, either way, yep. hopefully that'll work. We'll see. So pray for us that this one's successful. Yeah. Uh, so Sayla, if you go ahead and take Coco out, take her inside. I also see some sunflowers that are in there. So we're gonna go ahead and see if we can transplant that. I don't want the goats eating those up before we can get the seeds and things from them. So we're gonna dig a couple of those up and then we'll start working on our fence. Uh, all that at the same time. Okay, go. Some of you may be wondering, why in the world did you take the time to just dig those sunflower plants up? And I'm actually getting ready to take the time now to transplant them before we get back to the fence. And why? Yeah, well, it's because these sunflowers produce sunflower seeds, which can go to feeding the goats and the chickens. So we've had to buy sunflower seeds all this time. So we just, why not just grow more? And we actually did try to start some from seed over in some other areas, but it didn't work out. But these are growing, so let's take advantage of them while we have them and they're growing. Well, I don't exactly have this area prepped and ready to plant these sunflowers, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So we're gonna do a quick prep. I'm just gonna use a Sterapo, shave off an area, use our auger to drill a hole in the ground, and then plant our plants in there. No need to disturb all the rest of the soil and, and working on pulling up all the rest of the grass. These are just sunflowers. We just need them for the seed. So we'll do that and then we'll just start adding leaf compost around that to suppress the weeds over time. And then bang, we should have some sunflowers without having to do a tremendous amount of work and just do a really quick bed prep for the sunflowers. All right, so we're gonna do each plant about 12 inches apart and then the rows uh, probably like two feet apart. So we're just gonna go Sweet spot for our plant. One plant. Two plants. Just like that. And then I'm gonna come through. And with my little shave patches there, I'm just gonna go after that. Just like that. 
And then with that, we'll put our sunflower transplants in. We'll do it, try to do it as quickly as we can so we can get back to the fence. So Josiah came over just in time to join us and water the sunflower plants that we have just transplanted. And we transplanted about 24 or so, but my drill is running out of juice. So gonna have to get some more, let it charge up some more and come back to it. So we're just gonna go ahead and roll this cart full of sunflower seeds, sunflower seeds, sunflower plants into the shade while our batteries are charging up and we're getting back to working on our goat fence. And then after we transplanted our sunflowers, we went back to set up our netting, our fencing for the goats. But as we were getting back to that, we had another breakout with the goats and they were all over the place. Go on, get out of here, get out of here. Get out of here, go, go on, nope. Oh, oh, that way. They were running through the property, that running that in the garden, and they even ran up to inside the high tunnel, and they were just going crazy. Oh man, they're definitely in the wrong spot. So it's like, let's get them back in and let's get this fence set up as quickly as possible. So we did. We got our netting set up and then I started running our poly wire just on the inside of the netting to try to create some height with the wire and the depth with two fences setting up a maximum security area for our goats to keep them in, hopefully. Look at you, man. Where'd it go? Yeah. He's stronger and stronger. Ah! Slide that in. Like that. Just wrap it around for now to hold it. Alright, you just hold the rod. Yep, that's all you had to do. Got our fence set up, brought the goats in, and they really loved it. And our dog, Pepper, really loves being around the goats. She just loves it. I think she likes being around the goats more than she likes being around our other dogs. And I was dropping some trees and branches so that way they'll have some nice greens, vegetation to eat. So as I cut branches off trees and cut trees down as we working on just creating a better property, I let the goats eat the greens off the branches and the trees that we cut down. And then after they're done with what they're gonna eat, I delimb the branches of the trees And then I use my DR power chipper shredder to chip out all the different branches and so that way we can use the chips, the mulch, and different areas around our homestead.
And after I got done with that, they were still in the fence. And you know what? It's been about 10 days and they have still been in the fence. Hopefully it continues to stay. And I'm gonna to try to continue to provide them with what they need. And we'll get to the point where we can figure out some systems where we can move them better. But right now we're just training them to stay in the areas that we want for them to stay. So we'll just have to, just have to stay tuned to see how it goes. In the meantime, I've also added a male goat for my friend Alex at Windy Brook Ridge. And he has done a really good job. And I brought the male on because we didn't have a male goat. And I really have been wanting to increase the goats that we have, believe it or not, despite all the troubles that we're having. I don't know, maybe I'm losing brain cells, maybe I'm not, I don't know. But I, the overall goal with the goats is to use them for property management, as well as to hopefully have them as a source of milk. And then, I know this is hard for some of you, but also meat at one day. I don't know though. Some of these ones that keep getting out, it becomes much more enticing to have those for meat. <laughs> but you'll just have to wait and see. And uh, hopefully, just pray that they continue to stay in the pen so we can continue to work with them and have a good working relationship with the goats. Well, that's it for now. Like I said, keep me in, keep me in your prayers with our goats that they stay in. But uh, I have to go. See you next time.